Hey, this is Pastor Gary for another Wednesday Word. I pray that this finds you doing well. Uh, I'd like to first start off by thanking uh, Pastor Tim for his just awesome word on Sunday. Uh, just uh, really brought it. So I want to thank you for just uh, sharing that message. Um, and it was truly a blessing to me. So thank you. Um, today, uh, I'm not going to do any start any type of series or, or anything like that. What I'd like to do is is walk through the Bible uh, and, and, and walk through the, the last week uh, or, or Passion Week, uh, the, the, the week leading up to, um, you know, Easter and what Jesus did every day during that week. Uh, and, and so kind of highlight the, the events of, of Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday again. Uh, and so we're going to be looking through uh, a lot of scripture today. So so go ahead and get your Bible out. I'll give you a minute uh, to, to get that out because I'm going to be reading it. But it's, you know, it's one thing to hear it. It's another thing to see it um, in the pages of the Bible. So go ahead and get your Bible out right now. And as you do that, let's go ahead and, and go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Father God, first and foremost, Father, thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father. Father, we uh, we don't take what happened 2,000 years ago lightly, Father. Father, just uh, that you sent your son down, Father, to, to pay our sin debt, Father, so that we could one day, Father, be with you for eternity, Father. Father, I just thank you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. Excuse me. <coughs> so as we get into Passion Week, you know, a lot, uh, a lot happened. Uh, there was a lot of going uh, goings on behind the scenes, what was going on with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, um, what was going on at the temple. But I really want to focus on what Jesus did every day and, and uh, as we lead into Easter. And so let's first start uh, by going to John 12, John 12 verses 1 through 8. So in John 12, 1 through 8, uh, this was Saturday. Uh, this was six days before Passover. And so Passover is on Thursday. So six days back would be Saturday. Uh, this, this is the day of anointing. And this is out of John, again, John 12, 1 through 8. And this is God's word. It says, Jesus, therefore, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they made him a supper there and Martha was serving, but Lazarus was one of those reclining at the table with him. Mary then took a pound of very costly perfume of pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, uh, Iscariot uh, one of his disciples, who was intended to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and given to poor people? And uh, now he said this, not because he was concerned about the poor, but because he was a thief. And as he had the money box, he used to pilfer uh, what was put into it. Therefore, Jesus said, let her alone so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Jesus. So this is where Jesus was anointed by expensive perfume. And, and I think this began... Uh, Judas really became a big and it started it started the the snowball of where he eventually we'll get into that later on in the week where you know he he got what kind of went sideways with Jesus a little bit and so we'll see how that we we read about how that played out but we'll again we'll get into that in another day and so that was Saturday that was before his triumphant entry into Jerusalem uh where he went to to go see uh Lazarus who he raised and, and so to spend time, with, I think, with, with his friends, uh, to spend time with his loved ones, to spend time with, with uh, Lazarus and Martha uh, and, and Mary and just be there amongst friends. Uh, and, and so let's move to Sunday. Now, for those at the Spring Campus or those that were able to watch uh, my sermon on, on Sunday, we talked about this 
a day of triumphant entry, this day of demonstration and that's found in John 12 or Matthew 26, but also in John 12, 12 through 19. We're not going to read those verses because again, you can always refer back to my sermon on Sunday where Jesus made his entry into Jerusalem, 2.5 million people there. You know, they the city was astir. Uh, they put palms down and, and their coats down and Jesus rode them, uh, rode a donkey into town. And, and that was a prophecy out of Isaiah, uh, Zechariah 9.9. 9. And, and so you see that, that day of triumphant entry as Jesus goes into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. Now on Monday, uh, this is the day of authority. Uh, we find this in Mark 11, Mark 11, 12, verses 12 through 18. And so uh, we've had Saturday, we've had Sunday, now Monday, and, and, and we're going to start with verse 12. And it's this is the cursing of the fig tree. And it says, on the next day, when they had left, left Bethany, he became hungry. Seeing a distance, seeing at a distance, a fig tree, a tree, a fig tree and leaf, I apologize, he went to see it if perhaps he would find anything on it. And he came to it and found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. He said to it, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And this, and his disciples were listening. Mark says that it wasn't the season for figs. However, it did have leaves. So it was confusing. Now we could be, it, you know, Jesus could have been talking about Israel because, you know, it it was you know they had all pr the presence uh, of being fruitful but there was there was no fruit being made there they, they weren't uh, uh, making any fruit but i think it it also illustrates today's churches and 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 more importantly today's christians we give the appearance uh, of of being fruitful as far as you know uh, being disciples and, and being christians uh, but there's no fruit there we have all the outward appearance. We have the leaves, right? We we know we know Christianese. We know how to speak it. We can recite a couple of verses. You know, John three sixteen. Again, I see. You know, I said on this on Sunday. That's low hanging fruit, right? But there's no depth. There's no fruit being made. You know, people go to churches to to be filled with God's word. You know, the psalmist talks about. You know, we should be panting and for we should be thirsting for for. Uh, for God's word, like a deer thirst for water, you know, and, but unfortunately too many times people leave churches unfulfilled because it's all about the leaves. It's all about the presence, but there, there's no meat there. There's no fruit there. Uh, and, and so I think that that is a parable that we need to be mindful of daily. Are we given the appearance of fruit uh, uh, by having leaves, but there's no fruit in, in our lives? And, and so, you know, on this day, on Monday, Jesus also goes into the temple. And we find this again in, in Mark 11, and we pick it up at verse 15. Uh, then they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple and began to drive those, out those who were buying and selling in the temple, and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. And he would not permit anyone to carry merchandise through the temple. And he began to teach and say to them, It is not written, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations. But you have made it a robber's den. Let me repeat that again. And he began to teach and to say to them, Say to them, Is it not written, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations. But you have made it a robber's den. The chief priest and the scribes heard this and began seeking how to destroy them, for they were afraid of him, for the whole crowd was astonished at his teaching. So why did Jesus go to the temple? Well, that's where the people were. He wanted to share God's word. He wanted to share, you know, the, the, the truth, uh, the gospel. And so that's why he went there. Well, you know, and, and so when he went to the temple to teach, it was, you know, this was, it was Passover. There were so, there are all these pilgrims who had made it, they made their way to Jerusalem. Again, 2.5 million people on some accounts to celebrate the holiday of Passover. And as a result, all these people were coming to the temple to offer daily sacrifices. Unfortunately, the priests had, were taking advantage of the people that were, where they were coming by selling these animals, these sacrifices at ridiculous prices. To make matters even worse, they were doing this on in the temple courtyard. You know, so the Jewish temple 
was set up in sections or courts, right? You had the inner court where the Jewish men could worship. You had, you know, you had the, the court of women where Jewish women could worship. Then the, you had the outer courts. You had the, uh, the court of the Gentiles, uh, where God-fearing people from other nations or, or nationalities could come and pray and worship. And this is where the priests had set up their tables, and they were selling the animals, which could be used for sacrifices. The temple was supposed to be a place where people came and prayed and to worship God. But the priests had turned this outer courtyard into nothing more than a noisy, smelly marketplace. So Jesus became indignant, and that's right, righteous indignation. And, and he, 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 he scorned them. He said, my house will be a house of prayer, but you have made it into a den of robbers. Then Jesus proceeded to turn the tables over and run them out of the temple courtyard. You know, this made the priest very angry at him. In fact, they this is where they started to conspire about a, a, of a way to get rid of him. But they were so, you know, they talked, the, the scripture talks about how they were afraid to really do anything to play, put hands on him because there are so many people that were following Jesus because they saw him as a prophet. So let's go to Tuesday, and this is the day of testing, and, and we're going to uh, go to Luke 20. Um, and, and so Tuesday, uh, day of, this is the day of testing, and, and this is found in Luke 20, verses 1 through 19. And this is uh, where the religious leaders started questioning Jesus, right? They started asking him questions, and, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. It says, on, the, uh, on one of the days while he was teaching the people in the temple and preaching the gospel, again, because that's where the people were, he went to the temple to do that, the chief priests and the scribes with the elders confronted him, and they spoke, saying to him, Tell us by what authority you are doing these things, or uh, who is the one who gave you this authority? Now he could have been; they could have been asking authority to go in there and, and cleanse the temple, or to go in there and who's giving you or who's giving you authority to teach uh, this gospel? And and so uh, let me pick up at three. He says uh, Jesus answered and said to them, "I will also ask you a question, and you tell me." Was the baptism of John from heaven or from man? From men, they reasoned among themselves. Uh, essentially, my 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 theory on this is they were trying to get their lives right. Right? I mean, they were trying to okay, what can we say? But we all got to be on the same accord. So let's all get our lives right. Um, and, and so they reasoned among themselves, saying, if we say from heaven. He will say, why did you not believe him? But if we say from men, all the people will stone us to death for they are convinced that John was a prophet. So they answered that they did not know where it came from. And Jesus said to them, nor will I tell you by what authority do I, I uh, by authority, I do these things. And so uh, after verse eight, you know, this is where Jesus started uh speaking in parables. And so you have the parable of the vine growers in verse nine. And, and this is what he, he told the chief chief priest. And, and, and again, verse nine, and he began to tell the people uh, this parable. A man planted a vineyard and rented it out to vine growers and went on a journey for a long time. At the harvest time, he sent a slave to the vine growers so that they would give him some of the pro uh, produce of the vineyard. But the vine growers beat him and sent him away empty handed. And he proceeded to send another slave and they beat him also and treated him shamefully and sent him away empty handed. And he proceeded to send a third. And this one also uh, they wounded and cast out. The owner of the vineyard said, what shall I do? I will send my beloved son. Perhaps uh, they will respect him. But when the vine growers saw him, they reasoned with one another saying, this is the heir. Let us kill him so that the inheritance will be ours. So they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and destroy these vine growers and will give the vineyard uh, to others. When they heard it, they said, may it never be. But Jesus looked at them and said, what then is this that is written? The stone which the builders rejected, this became the chief cornerstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces. But on whomever it fa falls, 
Uh, it will be it will scatter him like dust. The scribes and the chief priests tried to hand, uh, lay hands on him that very hour, and they feared the people, for they understood that he spoke this parable against them. The Pharisees and uh, the chief priests uh, continued to test him, asking him several questions. Uh, one dealt with the resurrection, one dealt with commandments, and, and then, of course, the final one about the Messiah. Each time, Jesus' uh, Jesus' answer, answer astonished them, so they finally gave up. Uh, but this parable uh, speaks volumes to the gospel, right? And 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 who Jesus was, and and you know Jesus was was had a message, and 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 the chief priest rejected that message, um, and, and so you know this spoke directly to them and to their heart and where they were. So let's go to Wednesday, and and this is a day of preparation. Um, you know, Mark records uh, these events uh, occurred two days before Passover, so this would have been Wednesday. This could, this was a day of rest, um, and, and so we're picking it up in Mark 14, Mark chapter 14, verses 3 and 9, and it says, While he was in Bethany at the home of Simon the leper uh, and reclining at the table, there came a woman with an alabaster vial of very costly per perfume of pure nard, and she broke the vial and poured it over his ha head. Uh, but some were indignantly remarking to one another, why has this perfume been wasted? For this perfume might have been sold for over 300 denarii and the money given to the poor, and they were scolding her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you bother her? She has done a good deed to me. For you always have the poor with you, and whenever you wish, you can, you can do good to them. But you do not always have me. She has gone, she has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for the burial. Truly, I say to you, wherever the gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will be also will also be spoken in the memory of her. So this this scripture verse right here talks about Jesus's body being prepared for burial. Um, you know, but about to to be prepared for, for what's to come. This is also if we look at Mark fourteen ten. You know, I think this was the final straw because in Mark 14, 10, it says, Then Judas uh, Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went off to the chief priest in order to, bear, to, to betray him to them. They were, uh, they were glad when they heard this and promised to give him money. And he began seeking to betray him at an opportune time. So let's go to Thursday, and this is the day of farewell. We find this in Luke 22, 7 through 13. This is also uh, where we read about the Passover meal. And so we're going to start in verse 7. So this is Luke 22, 7 through 13, and these events happened on Thursday. Then came the first day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. And Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us so that we may eat it. They said to him, where do you want us to prepare it? And he said to them, when you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house so that uh, house that he enters. And you shall say to the owner of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room in which I may set, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large furnished upper room. Prepare it there. And they left and found everything just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When the hour had come, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I shall never again eat until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he said, take this and share it amongst yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now until the kingdom of God comes. And when he had taken some bread and, give, and, and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup, which is poured out for you, is the new covenant in my blood. But behold, the hand of the one betraying me, is with mine on the table for indeed the son of man is going the son of man is going as it has been determined but woe to the man to by whom he is betrayed and they began to discuss among themselves which one of them it might be who was going to do this thing 
So this is this is where again Jesus shares uh, the Lord's Supper with his disciples, and he shares this last meal with them. Uh, so let's go to Friday, uh, and this is uh, you know Good Friday as we call it, the uh, day of sacrifice, the day that Jesus was crucified. Uh, in Luke twenty three, we read in verses six through twelve. Uh, we read uh, about the hearing before um, Herod and, the, and, and, and Pilate and how it was going back and forth. Um, we read about how uh, Jesus stood before them and he was silent. But we're going to go to Luke 23, verses 33 through 49, and this is the crucifixion. So let's pick it up at Luke 23, verses 33 through 49. When they came to the place called the skull, they were crucified. Where they uh, there, they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right hand and one on the on the left. But Jesus was saying, "Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing." And they cast lots, dividing up his garments among themselves. And the people stood by, looking on. And even the rulers there sneered at him, saying, "He saved others; let him save himself. If this is Christ of God, his chosen one." The soldiers also mocked him, coming up to him, offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Now there was also an inscription above him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there was hurling abuses at him, saying, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other answered and rebuked him, saying, do not even fear God. You, uh, do you not even fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed are suffering, are suffering ju justly, for we are receiving what we deserve for our deed. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he was saying, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. And he said to him, truly, I say to you today, you shall be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour and darkness fell over the whole land until the ninth hour. Because the sun was obscured and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. His last. Now when the centurion saw what had happened, he began praising God saying, certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowd who, got, who came together for this spectacle, then they observed what, they ha what had happened and began to return beating their breast. And all his acquaintances and the women who accompanied him from Galilee were standing at a distance seeing these things. Now, Thursday night, they, you know, the, the, the apostles um, argued about who would seat at the right and the left of God. But at the end, it was two thieves that were to the left of, to the left or right of Jesus. Um, one again continued to 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 berate Jesus, saying, "If you're if you're Christ, save yourself." But it was the other one that said, "Don't forget me," and that's the one that entered into the kingdom. You know, so many times we we want and we want and we want, but we forget that there's a price to that. We want the glory. We, we want the assurances, but are we willing to accept the suffering that goes along with it? Uh, because there is a, a penalty. There is a, a payment. There is a sin debt that needs to be paid, and Jesus paid that sin debt um, at what he did on the cross. And, and, and to be with Jesus in heaven, to spend eternity in, in heaven, we have to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, just as that that, that robber did that, that moment on the cross. But too many times we're just stuck in our own ways. Uh, we just enjoy our sin too much. Even when it's right in front of us, we, we, we you know, where salvation is right in front of us, we continue to enjoy our sin. Let's go to Saturday. Uh, this is the day of absence. Um, you know, and and I'm actually going to go to First Peter, First uh, Peter three verses eighteen and nineteen. Uh, and so let me read First Peter three eighteen and nineteen 
For Christ also died for sins once and for all and just for the unjust so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit in which also he went and made pro proclamation to the spirits now in prison. So Jesus went to, to Sheol, he went to Hades, he went to Abraham's bosom. Uh, you know, he didn't preach anything because he wasn't preaching the message of salvation. He went to go proclaim his victory over death. So that's where he went. He went to Sheol or Hades, the, the, the underworld, uh, to proclaim his victory over death to the demons. Uh, you know, to those that had fallen. And, and, and you know, on Sunday, I talked about how, uh, you know, when, when Roman uh, generals would, would, you know, would defeat another army, they would go and parade and that would be their victory parade. That's what Jesus did. He went on a victory tour and he proclaimed his victory over death. And so uh, let's go to Sunday, and, and, and this is Easter. This is the day of resurrection, and this is found in Matthew 28, 1 through 9, and Jesus is risen. He has risen indeed, and, and, and the tomb is empty. And so let's pick it up, Matthew 28, verses 1 through 9. Now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. And behold, a, a severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away in the, away the stone and sat upon it. And his appearance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. The guards shook for fear of, of him and be and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who had been crucified. He is not here for he is risen. Just as he said, come see the place where he was lying. Go quickly and tell the disciples that he has risen from the dead and behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. And they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran uh, to report it to the, his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Amen. And, and again, Jesus is risen. This is what we celebrate, you know, the resurrection of, 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 our, of, of Jesus. This is what the gospel is all about. If there is no resurrection, there is no gospel. Jesus died and resurrection, resurrected, lived, uh, walked on this earth for 40 days and then ascended into heaven. You know, and this is why we celebrate Easter. This is the, this was the week leading up to Easter every day that what Jesus did. I hope that this was a blessing to you as it was to me studying, you know, the events that took place so that I don't, uh, you know, just pass over uh, um, what happened on, on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and all of, how all of this is tied together and the teaching what Jesus did at the temple, you know, cleansing the the temple, cursing the fig tree, you know, uh, uh, the, the parable of, of the, the, the vine of the vineyard, all of those are lessons that, that we can glean from as we get ready to celebrate Easter. Amen. Well, amen. I got a couple of announcements. Uh, first, of course, is Easter is this Sunday, uh, April 4th. Both of our campuses are going to have two uh, uh, services to, to celebrate Resurrection Day, uh, both at Magnolia and Spring. I'm going to be at 9 and 1045, respectively, at both campuses. Uh, we will also live stream on Facebook the 9 o'clock service at Magnolia and the 1045 service at Spring. A couple of cal calendar events. We're going to have a man the, our Magnolia Men uh, Men's Ministry will have an event on Friday, April 9th at 7 p.m. The cost is five dollars. So the Men's Ministry will have an event on Friday, April 9th at seven o'clock. The event uh, is cost is five dollars. Our kids and youth are are raising money for their their camps, and so they're going to have a bake sale uh, on April 11th, immediately following uh, service at both campuses. Uh, this is not an auction, a silent auction. If you like something, pay, you know, you pay for it and then you leave. So it is a bake sale, uh, but it is more importantly, it is a fundraiser uh, for our kids to and, and youth to raise money for camp. And, and so uh, on April 17th, our spring uh, women's ministry is going to have an event on Saturday, April 17th from 11 to 1. Uh, so be sure to bring a sack lunch and register if you need child care or well, register anyway. But let the women's ministry know if you need childcare. 
And so that's going to be April 17th from 11 to 1. Our Magnolia Women's Ministry will have an event uh, Tuesday evening on the 20th, April 20th, uh, from 6.30 to 8. Uh, sandwiches and chips will be provided again. Uh, register for that event, but also let them know if you need child care. It will be provided, uh, but they need to know ahead of time to secure uh, workers for the nursery. And so that's April 20th, 6.30 to 8. Sandwiches and chips are provided. Uh, finally, um, our men, uh, Springs Men Ministry will have an event Saturday, April 24th. The Springs men ministry, Men's Ministry will have a, a men's event Saturday, April 24th from 11 to 3. There is no cost for that. Just let them know that you're coming. I think they're doing a chili cookout. Uh, and, and so that's going to be a great time of the Lord. All of these are going to be a great time of fellowship, great time of discipleship, uh, and, and just really just, uh, you know, being around uh, like-minded individuals. Be sure to invite people to those. Be sure to invite people to Easter, family, friends, neighbors. We have those invite cards. Uh, we have videos and, and, and different slides on Facebook. Be sure to share that, uh, comment on it, and, and let's just bring people uh, to Churchton so that they can know God. Uh, and speaking of, that's our, our sermon message. Our uh, message for Sunday is knowing God. But on April 11th, we're starting a new uh, live study, a living in fellowship together Bible study, uh, but both campuses. And so that's knowing God. Uh, it's right here. This is the book right here. The cost is $5. If you've never been to a lift before, uh, you get your first book free. And so this, this uh, series is called Journey into Knowing God. You do not want to miss it. With that being said, God bless. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday.